I met Tony at a party in 2012 and we kind of hit it off. He, he was a fan of my Metallica film, Metallica, Some Kind of Monster, which is about therapy and, uh, you know, things that he, I think, could relate to. And uh, we just, you know, had a great, deep, long conversation. And out of that conversation, he invited me to uh, one of his seminars. I, I didn't know he did live seminars. I only had the most superficial impression of who he was. Uh, of course, we know the Shallow Hal uh, cameo. Uh, that we've seen I'm, Tony in. I'm glad we brought, so, we got a shallow and so, how and, reference and, out of the way and, back. And, and so, you know, I had the, I had misperceptions and just not a deep perception of who he was. We had this amazing conversation. So he invited me out to one of his seminars. And, you know, I'm a super busy guy and I'm not, or I would have told you back then, I'm not a seminar guy. Um, and so as I was getting in my car, getting on the plane, landing, getting my rental car, getting to the venue, I was thinking, like, what the hell am I doing? Um, and I went in and I just, something was pulling me to this event in 2012. And actually after the first break, I fled for the exit doors. <laughs> the dancing, the pairing off with a stranger, the sharing of intimate emotions, it wasn't for me. Uh, so I thought, and so I called my wife after, after this two hour break and I said, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here for six days. I don't want to insult the guy, but how do I, how do I leave gracefully? And my wife, bless her heart, said, you know, why don't you give it another day? So I gave it another day, and on day two, I had this amazingly profound transformational experience. You, you see in the film, there's that guided memory process where, uh, you know, Tony challenges you to go to your earliest memory and then to remember something about that memory before your earliest memory, and, and it's somewhat... Uh, I'm in a room of 2,500 people for the first time ever doing this kind of a thing. I opened my eyes. I was flooded in tears. This, this, like, I cried like I can't remember ever crying. And I thought to myself, wow, there's something to this. I felt lighter. It wasn't like a light bulb went off and my whole life had changed, but I just felt lighter in the moment. So I said, you know what, there's something to this, and I'm going to stick it out. Um, and so I stuck it out for the six days, and after it was over, I, I called Tony, and I said, man, thank you so much for that invitation. Not only was it an amazingly transformational experience, but I want to make a movie about it. I think the interventions that you do are inherently cinematic. I think the camaraderie that's in the room, these boundaries between people, a group of 2,500 people from all walks of life, these boundaries just dissolve and there's a community of people who not only want to improve themselves but want to send love and connection to other people, which I just thought was amazing and something I wanted to put on the screen. You know, most of my other films have been pretty dark looks at, you know, tough problems like prosecutorial misconduct, pollution in the Amazon. I guess you could say I make feel bad movies, but in this case, I want in this case I wanted to do make a feel good movie and just bring to the screen what what Tony taught me. And I I chased him for two years because initially he was a little resistant, but eventually I wore him down and I and I, I started making the film in 2014. And uh, you know it's been an amazing journey. I see about 200,000 people a year in 15 countries. I only see 2,500 people for this program, and I deliberately make it extremely intimate. And so the idea, we have cameras there, but they're long-form cameras just to show, you know, magnification so people see it. The idea of someone being in your face with a camera for a documentary, I just felt it would disrupt the people. And then suddenly, I didn't think it would be possible to take six days of 14-hour days and convert that into two hours and have integrity and have the real message come across. But I was dead wrong. You know, part of what pushed me over the edge, he wore me down, that's some truth. But also, he finally came to me and said, listen, I understand your concern. How about I take the risk? How about we go film, and if at any moment it's really disrupting the audience, you can shut down the documentary and I'll go home and, you know, no problem, no, no, no harm. And he came in and did the most amazing job, but the most amazing thing, you've all seen it now, is, you know, for me, I know what this experience is like, and I think some of you out there, who's been in Date With Destiny out there? Some people out there know it's pretty extraordinary, and these interventions you saw are an hour and a half, two hours long, and he's reducing them to seven minutes, and I did 35 of these, and you see five in the film, but in those seven, eight, nine minutes that he put together, you really get the essence of the intervention, and, and the only way that can be done is somebody who's got seven Emmy nominations, two wins, two Academy Award nominations, two Peabody's, the one and only Joe Berlinger, ladies and gentlemen.